This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Drive out of the car! With your host, Mark Martinez. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. And the English professor. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Wait, wait, what's going on? Can Crushers on a Saturday? They do Sundays and Wednesdays, or Wednesdays and Sundays, depending on how you're looking at it. What are they doing on a Saturday? Normally, they're drinking or collecting garbage, or what is going on? That's right. I'm your host, Mark Martinez, and we needed to get this show out. Recently, I sat down with team leader, the head honcho of RetroSoft Studios, the man that's bringing the sequel to the 1991 WrestleFest game that we all spent millions and millions of dollars on at an arcade, a pizza shop, a mall, whatever. It's Mr. Michael Herman who's coming on Can Crushers to talk about Retro Mania Wrestling. Guys, I'm going to spill the beans. Some of this stuff that we talk about during the interview is unbelievable. You hear me mark out. Yes, I'm aptly named. Thank you, Mom, for naming me Mark because that's just what I am. I am a huge Mark. And it's about video games. It's about wrestling. It's about so much stuff in my life. Come on, you guys have been with us now for years and you've caught on that I'm just a nerd that loves stuff. Uh, When you hear some of the things that Mr. Herman has coming in the near future, he drops a bombshell about one of the big things that's going on, and I'm going to leave it at that. But he also gives praise to his staff about how much they've dedicated their their life to this game. This is a... uh, I don't want to say a side project, but it's a passion. It is something that they really want to put together. And we find out much more about what's going on with Retromania right now. But before we get into that, let's send it out to Al Snow to talk about our great sponsor, Collar and Elbow. Guys, you know about the hats, the hoodies, the tees, everything that Collar and Elbow has to offer. Just get out there. You know, support Collar and Elbow. And when you... Uh, check out, use the promo code CAN CRUSHERS, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS, and then you'll get that extra 10% off your entire order. And it also helps kick some money back to us so we can do great things like talk to wrestlers around the world via Skype that we have stuff going on with, or get team leaders from Retrosoft Mania and Retro Mania on here. And guys, you can just tell I'm really excited for this interview with Mr. Michael Herman. So no be- more beating around the bush. Let's send it out to Al. He'll tell you about uh, Collar and Elbow, and then we'll be back with the interview. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back to 
can crushers guys make sure you check out your collar and elbow stuff it's great you get the ten, extra 10 percent off when you use can crushers uh our promo code but let's dive into the interview that i talked about beforehand with the team leader the man the myth the legend already in my book bringing retro mania wrestling to all consoles mr michael herman michael welcome to can crushers Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys. I'm super excited about this game. I was young in 91. I dumped a ton of money <laughs> into WrestleFestas. I'm guessing you did, too, to make a game like this, right? With, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, that was that was my game growing up. Uh, you know, I was, I was a teenager at the time, and I played it uh, every time, you know, that's the first game I went to whenever I went to an arcade was WrestleFest. You know, and before that it was, you know, Superstars, but WrestleFest was the one. Absolutely. Yeah, WrestleFest was the one. Who did you uh, who were you when you played WrestleFest? So my my go-to tag team was typically Jake the Snake and Million Dollar Man. I was a heel heel tag team. I loved the Million Dollar Dream in the game and the DDT. They were my two favorite moves. Now, typically, I would not be the Million Dollar Man in the Royal Rumble because he didn't have a body slam to throw somebody over the top rope. So that was kind of a drawback of being him. So I'd typically be Jake the Snake um, in a Royal Rumble. Mr. Perfect was also my buddy that I played with a lot would be Mr. Perfect. So sometimes it would be Jake and Mr. Perfect in a uh, tag team match as well. But those, I would say Million Dollar Man and uh, Jake the Snake were my two favorites. Uh, I'll agree with you on Jake, but I'm with your buddy. I always took Mr. Perfect because he was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with Mr. Perfect. There's nothing he couldn't do. No, he he, he was priceless, priceless. Bef yeah. Before we dive into the game, because there's so many questions about that, let's give some props to you for bringing in this game. Uh, the What are we calling this? The official sequel? Is that what we're dubbing it? Yes, it's the official sequel to WrestleFest, Retromania Wrestling. So, you know, it's funny. We um, Initially, we didn't, because one of the things when we announced we were the official sequel, they're like, well, why don't you call yourself WrestleFest 2? Well, that deal to get done, to be able to call ourselves the official sequel, took, you know, months to negotiate and get, get the, the rights to do that. And also, within those rights, we also got the rights to the Matt Mania video game uh, IP as well. So um, it's just we had already started the, the marketing for Retromania, and I, I do like the Retromania name. But we are the official sequel to WrestleFest. You know, the look is going to look very similar to that, such as the entrances that go down. Our gameplay borrows from that. I would say we're a, we're kind of a, a, hi, a, a hybrid between Fire Pro and WrestleFest. So nice. we take the, the nice pick-up-and-play aspects of WrestleFest, but we have a little more depth than the original game did. Oh, yeah, we, we see that for sure already. Uh, let's talk about your wrestling passion. We talked about the Million Dollar Dream and Jake the Snake, but who introduced you to wrestling? Because you have to love wrestling as a child to play WrestleFest. Yep. Yeah, so I grew up uh, So I grew up outside of Philadelphia. So we had on television, um, I didn't have cable television, so I didn't get TBS or TNT or any of that, but I had... Channel 17, for anyone listening, if they're outside Philly, knows, you know, at 1 o'clock was um, Worldwide Wrestling. So it was the NWA brand. That was the first wrestling I saw. So I grew up, the first, I think, show I watched was the Rock and Roll Express. Great. Um, and Dusty Rhodes. It's just in probably 1985, I want to say. Um, you know, Magnum TA, I was probably my favorite wrestler uh, growing up. Uh, Nikita Koloff. You know, Ivan Koloff, Crusher Khrushchev, obviously Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. So I grew up initially watching NWA. And it's funny, I had a neighbor one house away who grew up watching WWF. And we would talk about wrestling. And at the time, you know, being I was 10, I didn't really understand that there were two different wrestling. He's like, oh, I love the Junkyard Dog. I'm like, I've never even heard of the Junkyard Dog. I don't even know what you're talking about. Who's the Junkyard Dog, you know? And I just didn't get, like, at the 11 a.m. was uh, Superstars was on. So... I, it took me a couple of weeks before we real we both realized oh there's two different you know leagues or promoting we didn't call them promotions then you know we there are two different leagues of wrestling and one was the NWA and one was the WWF and uh, so I then started watching both of them and then 
UWF came on on like a UHF channel at like 11 p.m. that I started watching that, and that was the Bill Watts promotion with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Dr. Death, Ted DiBiase, which is where I first saw him. Um, I remember I saw Jake the Snake Roberts with Ric Flair, which I didn't really understand because Jake the Snake was in WWF at the time, and I guess it was an older match or something. But, you know, I, I just loved wrestling. I would watch anything. A World Class was on at, like, midnight on some Saturdays on some channel. I would watch that. So anything and everything I would watch from 10 to probably 20, those 10 years of my life, I religiously watched. And then when I started working uh, as an accountant, I kind of didn't have as much time and then got married. So I would always stay connected to wrestling um, and, and know who the champions were and what was going on. But it wasn't as much of a hardcore uh, watching it then until we started making the game. So now I watch it a ton again. <laughs> well, we'll transition right into that right now. Are you watching every – well, I, you're busy. Trust me, I know. Are you watching everything you possibly <laughs> Everybody's can? Everybody's busy, right? Right? Are you watching everything yeah, you possibly you know, can? I, I, I want – you know, obviously we have, an, uh, we have the NWA license in our game. So and, – and NWA is the first thing I grew up watching. So I love what they're doing, what uh, – Billy uh, Corgan and Dave Lagan are doing there. Um, they we worked out a deal with those guys. Great to deal with, um, and you know they kind of fit what they're doing and what we're doing. Really is good symmetry. We really fit together, or synergy, I should say, not symmetry. Synergy. Um, so I, I really I love the NWA stuff. I love it's an hour. Now I have three kids. I'm married. You know I have. I, and this isn't my uh, only thing I do is the video game. You know, I own another company as well, which does accounting and finance software, which kind of pays the bills. And I do enjoy doing that as well. It's not as fun as making a video game about wrestling. Right, but, right. You know, you, you do what you can, right? But um, but so I, I like the NWA. I like Ring of Ring of Honor, Impact. I like the, the kind of the shorter shows, actually, just because it's tough to sit down for three hours and watch Raw. It um, really is. No, and, but I love I love the Bray Wyatt stuff they're doing. I think that's awesome, you know. So, um, you know, and I, I've checked out AEW as well. So, you know, New Japan. It's just it's a great time to be a wrestling fan now. It's just easily accessed to fight TV and all the stuff they have on there. You have Impact and stuff in it. And I've just now with uh, our Indie Mania promotion, you know, I'm really getting into independent wrestling. There's some great talented guys out there that are like the stars of tomorrow. Um, and just do some great work. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting in, more into independent wrestling as well. So it's almost like our childhood, because I'm going to lump us together, because just putting two and two together, I know we're the same age. We didn't talk about this off air or anything, but I know roughly right. we're the same age, because everything you said that you watched first, I only watched NWA until my buddy from New York moved here. And he's like, dude, have you heard of Hulk Hogan? <laughs> All right. I'm like, who the hell is Hulk Hogan? Right. You know, I had Ric Flair and Dusty oh, Rhodes. Yeah. Um, right. I completely lost my train of thought. That's the way this show runs, by the way, Mike. Uh, right. And no more face. Right, yeah. So, NWA, NWA, NWA. By the way, the video with Nick Aldis is amazing that they show uh, consistently yep. weekly on the show. Did you guys do that? I can't take any credit for it at all. So, uh, that was all Dave and Nick. Um, and I don't know who had more say or what in that. Um, but they did it. A, a, the NWA did it. Um, you know, they, they talked to us about it. They said, you know, it was their idea from the beginning. Let's do it. Cause they started doing the commercials on the first show. Um, you know, the kind of the period, you know, eighties kind of level uh, commercials. And, and Dave is just like, we want to do a retromania commercial to announce that, you know, the NWA is going to be in the game. And I'm like, I love it. And they did it. And I had nothing but good thing. Like they nailed it on the, I don't know how many iterations they went through, but the one I, the one I saw, I thought they nailed it on the first try. So, um, yeah, it was awesome. You know, I saw it for the first time, you know, I had a preview, but you know, it was totally awesome to see it when I, cause I watched it on, you know, six Oh five on Tuesdays. I watch their program. You know, I make the whole family now watches it while we're eating dinner. <laughs> but, Excellent. Um, you know, it, when I saw it, it was awesome. I loved it. You know, I'm going retro, baby. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about some of your staff. And I don't have names written down, but when I was uh, doing some research, you have a staff of 
pretty hardcore hitters that have brought everything to this game from uh, people that have worked on uh, wrestling games before. So let's give them some of their props. Uh, shoot some names out that have really done a lot for this game. Yeah, so, you know, I, I got kind of lucky in, um, in in who I've got to work for. Just like, so I have the least amount of video game development experience on my team, really. So um, to start, um, Mike Archer, who is a former, used to work for WWE for 10, 13, 10, uh, 10 plus years, at least over 10 years. And then he also worked for Acclaim Entertainment, worked on some of the Legends of Wrestling games. Um, and just a bunch of, not just wrestling games, but all kinds of Major League Baseball, you know, a bunch of other games that he's worked on and continues to work on as a consultant. He works, you know, he's a consultant for me and just been somebody I've been able to lean on with not only wrestling ties, but video game uh, publishing experience. As a very well connected person and a, just a great person overall. Um, we share a lot of the same interests and, you know, we had, you know, I contacted him via LinkedIn. We had lunch and hit it off. And then he's like, I want to be involved. And it's just the rest. He's just been my kind of right hand man. I will to bounce anything off of. So he's been integral in, in getting to where we're at now. And then my social media guy, Mike, uh, Mike T, um, has been phenomenal. So if for any of those who don't follow us that are listening to this, I definitely suggest follow at Retrosoft Studio on, uh, Twitter. Instagram, uh, Facebook, he, he is responsible for almost all of our posts. Now, both of us answer questions of, that people pose on there. And we try to answer almost everything. Um, if we can, we, you know, as we've grown, it's been a little bit more difficult because the number of messages we're getting every day has grown substantially, but we still do our best to answer everything. But he has just been phenomenal with our social media. Uh, and then our, our, our programmers, um, uh, Charles and Sebastian are phenomenal as well. They're our two main programmers that are basically coding the game. And then we have, um, we have last count, I think currently eight artists, uh, working on the game right now. Um, we, we represent five of the seven continents, um, that are working on this game. So we have people from all over the world that are helping out doing pixel artwork from, you know, from the U S Canada, uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Brazil, uh, UK, uh, I said Canada already, um, uh, Australia. Uh, so we have people all over the world, uh, Spain working on this game. Uh, so I just, I, I can't speak highly enough of my team. You know, it was my dream to do this, but they've really made the dream a reality and, and gotten us to where we're at right now. And we're, you know, we, I feel like we still have a lot to do, but we've gotten so much done, um, uh, with the game so far. So. It's all coming together. It it is uh, everything that I see. I see that you guys have done some. Uh, I I want to say maybe some demo gamings uh, here and there. I saw T Tommy Dreamer already playing the game, so I was pretty jealous of him. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we've gone to a couple gaming conventions, a couple comic cons, a couple independent wrestling shows to get to basically play test, have people play test the game and. I'll tell you, the first one we went to was back in June. It was uh, Too Many Games out in Oaks, Pennsylvania, outside of Philadelphia. And that was the first time anyone other than, like, my kids and our developers had played the game. So I was super nervous going into that. You know, one, no one was going to want to play it. You know, people would just walk by us. And two, if they did play it, they wouldn't like it. But it was the complete opposite. Uh, we had nothing but great, great response there. You know, people see the big sign that we had up because uh, our, our artists who did the caricature artwork just did a phenomenal job and all the wrestlers that are in the game you know if you like wrestling you came over to play it um, so everyone already kind of was at a video game conference convention you know they saw wrestling they were they were immediately drawn to because they're wrestling fans they all really loved it and then we had tommy dreamer was there on on saturday signing autographs and he played against a couple people there so it was just awesome so it's been really well received so far um and we just keep we keep honing in on that gameplay and making sure it's fun to play. And I actually prefer it over WrestleFest now. So wow. uh, you know, we still have a ton to do, a lot more characters. But, you know, the, the thing is, with today's technology, we're not under the same constraints that the people were um, when they made WrestleFest, right? We don't have to worry about the number of colors on the screen. 
you know, we don't have to worry about the technical limitations of arcade hardware. So we have a, a lot easier, I will say, than those initial developers did in WrestleFest. Like, we don't have to worry about anything from right. a constraint standpoint. So, you know, with that, and, that, and they also had some different gameplay mechanics that they had to deal with as far as they needed people to keep putting quarters in the machine. So we're, this is more of a console port. Uh, uh, if anything, so we don't we don't really have to worry about people putting quarters into the machine. So our gameplay has been changed to reflect that as well. And technic- technology has changed in thirty years, right? <laughs> A little bit, right? A right. little bit. Since I've we have more processing power on what we're talking on right now than those big arcade machines ever had, probably by a million times. Right, exactly. So before we dive into the game, and I know this is going to be a question you're like, dude, give us a minute. Um, Retrosoft, I mean, you you have Retromania Wrestling going right now, and it's already been announced that there's probably going to be DLCs, and we'll get into that in a second. Can we look right. forward to any other games in the in the near future, in the far future? Is is there something that you want to tackle down the line besides wrestling? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's I have a, a an empty notebook of ideas that we want to do. Like I am big into 2D games, you know, and I like sprite artwork. Um, you know, I think it's aged much better than the early 3D stuff. I think there's still a, a lot of people out there that appreciate sprite artwork. So we we have I have a bunch of other ideas, beat 'em ups that I, I was also a big fan of. Like if you remember the Spider Man, the X Men, the Avengers, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, those types of beat 'em ups from the early '90s. Uh, I would love to do something like that with some different IP uh, that was never done before. Um, you know, maybe some retro sports games as well that we just don't see as much. I just, there's something about the, the 2d. It's funny over the holidays. I, I got a, um, a Sega Genesis mini oh, and you know, it took me a little bit to adjust. It took me a little bit to adjust back to the graphics, but once I did, cause you know, it is even, even though they're 2d are like our 2d is more high res than theirs. Theirs was, it wasn't built for like high resolution, uh, TVs. But once you adjust to that, the gameplay is just stellar. You know what I mean? All those games, again, not all of them, but, you know, a lot of part of those games, since you were somewhat limited in the graphic style, you know, each pixel meant something, and the gameplay was, you know, really good. And, um, you know, I think that that era of game and has aged well from a, from a pixel. I mean, our pixel artists are amazing. When you guys see some of these stages that we haven't released yet, um, you know, specifically I'll mention we have a beach – kind of a beach bash uh, type of stage. It's just phenomenal with the ocean in the background, waves, people on the beach, you know. Nice. I'm, those are the kinds of things we're working the, on. I, you probably yeah. can't use bash at the beach, so I will say it and you right. don't have you to. Right, can't use uh, yeah. that. But, you would ever, and I'm not sure if we can just switch the order of the words. I don't know. Probably I'll just not. The lawyers yeah. That works. <laughs> but it'll be something, uh, you know, something themed like that. Nice. Maybe the meltdown at Miami. I don't know. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. That but, sounds um, great, though. Brawl at the beach. Who yeah. knows? But yeah, we're we're you know the, the, the just that pixel artwork style. I, I love. So yeah, I think that was kind of another long winded answer by me. But yeah, definitely we have a lot of other ideas. But right now we're super focused on just making sure we knock the first one out of the park. And we talked a little bit off air about this, and so I'll bring this question right back around to you and let you give that long-winded answer again. Um, it says roughly first quarter, so when are we actually <laughs> looking at this? Because, you know, there's been – I'll throw this out there before you answer. I have not bought 2K in years. Once they threw that the women were uh, a big part of the storyline, I'm like – Oh man, I, I, we're a huge Bailey fan in this household. I like Sasha. You know, I'm like I gotta get this. This was the first time I got a 2K game in I don't know five years, and, and I'm hating myself. And I don't want you to say anything to that to get in trouble. So it's all on me. And I'm hating myself right. that I bought that. So uh, we don't need to rush this to get it correct, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, we're still trying to hit you know end of March, early April. Um, that's our goal. That's what we're, we're marching to right now. But with that said, if it's not ready, we'll pull, I have no problem pushing it back. I know people don't like push, but we didn't, that's one reason we're not announcing an actual date because I don't want to 
once I have, I put the date out there, I want to make sure we're going to hit that date. Um, you know, and, and I have a history just with, uh, my background in software engineering. Um, and you know, I have a history of, of, uh, running consulting projects and having go live dates and go live dates getting pushed, you know, and it happens a lot. So we're, we're trying to not put a date out on it. And just like, I think Blizzard might've always said, you know, it'll be done when it's done, you know, and that's kind of a, I don't want to rush something out. Um, you know, you know, unlike 2K, and I'm not going to bash them at all because I understand from a software development standpoint, it's tough. And especially they have a lot of different constraints that we just don't have. Like we're a small company and we don't have to answer the stockholders. So, you know, there's a lot of business uh, pieces to that that we just don't have to deal with that they do. So I can't imagine. I think they switched developers uh, midstream or early, early in the year. So they had a lot of other stuff going on, not, not to make excuses for them, but just a, a game of their magnitude uh, is a huge undertaking. And, you know, they don't have the luxury to say, well, we'll just ship it next month instead. You know, right. yeah, that's a luxury we do. Luckily, we have that luxury. So we can say, well, we'll, we'll ship it when it's done, you know. But with that said, I don't want to, I don't want to drag on. I don't want to be Duke Nukem forever either. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, we, we want to. We're working hard to get it done as quickly as possible, but we're not sacrificing quality. Right. The only stockholder you have to worry about is your wife, correct? Let's let's shoot that right. There. Let's <laughs> hey, you got that right. You got that right. <laughs> so the NWA commercial with Nick Aldis, uh, he talks about the gameplay. So let's dive into that real quick. Uh, I hate, again, uh, I'm going to be the basher or the bearer of bad news. I hate to say that, but I hate doing six different things to get a punch. Are, are we going to be right. button smashing on this? Is this what it's going to be, old school? Yeah, so there's button smashing. You know, it's, it's it borrows a little bit from all the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s um, arcade games. or Not even just arcade games, 2D wrestling games, right? So you can throw in tag team wrestling, um Pro Wrestling from Nintendo, Matt Mania, Superstar, WrestleFest, Saturday Night Slam Masters, Matt Mania, Three Count Bout. You know, I played all of them. I was fans of all of them. Now, some of them I like better than others. Obviously, WrestleFest was my favorite. So we borrow a lot from WrestleFest, but you'll see, you'll see some elements of WrestleFest where we have some button mashing. We have some randomness added into there. So it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a super, if you're the best game, you're always going to win kind of thing there's surprise in there so one of the mechanics i'll talk about is our pinning mechanic right so you get your you have a progression of moves where uh, similar to wrestlefest and fire pro you can't really do your your finisher right off the bat you can try occasionally very rarely you'll hit it i think in the original wrestlefest you could never do the finisher never, right off the bat. never i think we have a very you're right we have a very small percentage chance that you could do it now but at the, so we have something at the end um, like a near fall mechanic. So there's still a random chance that you'll kick out even with no energy. Okay. And it, when you, when it happens, even now we're testing that and it's like, it's a pop every time it happens. You're like, Oh, he kicked out. You know, and we've seen it. It was so cool to see this play out when we were watching people play the game uh, where two people were playing the game and they had played three matches and the winner won and on that fourth match. The guy thought he was done, and he kicks out. Everybody goes nuts. You get a little bit of an advantage for a short amount of time. So we're, we're, we're playing around with mechanics like that. Uh, but there's definitely still that button mashing aspect to it, where if you go to uh, – it auto grapples. There's no grapple button like, um, like the Aki engine. It's similar to pro wrestling, WrestleFest, um, Fire Pro, where you auto grapple. But there is that if you there's a slight timing thing that, with a bit of randomness to it, or it goes to the trading punches a la WrestleFest, and then it's a button smasher. Nice. So and then there's reversals or button smashing. There's no timing to the reversals or anything like that. It's basically button smashing and a, and a little bit of randomness to it, which we we're we're trying to appeal to um, people that you know don't want to go through eight different buttons and figure out how to do every single move. We there's a game like that, you know. And I think they do it well. when it's working right. It does. They do it well. Um, you know, take the bugs out of account. You know, the, I, I've enjoyed the, the 2K games, um, and they, and I think I like some of their their engines. Uh, and they're robust and they're deep. But you know, there's already a game for that. We're not going to be that as deep as that. But we're going to be deeper than WrestleFest. So, 
Nice, nice. So let's talk about some of the matches now. We're going to have the, the one-on-ones, the tag teams. Are we going to get anything like hardcore? Do we get a steel cage? Do we get some chairs outside? I mean, I, I'm throwing everything in a mix of it, but yeah, you know so, where I'm going. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the, the, the quick answer is if it's in wrestling, I want to add it to the game. Now, we do have some constraints to that answer, but we already have cages, uh, artwork done. Um we have chairs in there. We want to add additional weapons. Um, you know, I, I'm sure at some point we'll, we'll end up with barbed wire in there. You know, that that it's funny. One of the things we're looking into now is just how it affects the rating of the game. Things, you know, I didn't think of as a fan of wrestling games, but now I'm thinking of one as a as an owner of a company and saying, you know, you know, do we want to keep it as E? I don't even know if we can get an E on a fighting game. Period. But I don't um, think anymore. You know, so. Yeah, so it, since it's fighting game, we're already going to be team probably, but um, or thirteen, whatever it is. But uh, you know, but you know, anything, everything's on the table. One of the things I'm looking at is a scaffold match. Can we do that in 2D and it be fun? You know, and and really, what it comes down to is, is it fun? Every every single feature that we have a list that we want to add, the first question that we ask ourselves is, will it be fun if we add this feature? And can we implement it so it is fun? You know, so there are some. In 2D space, you do have some uh, limits. So, for example, the the classic, and I don't even know if I can, I won't say the name, but a, a double cage right. um, I, match right. you know, yeah. against each other, okay? That, that WWE so and NXT space, has now, yes, everybody knows. Yeah. Right, yeah. So we want, I want to do something like that, but is it going to be fun? We're going to have to zoom out to get both cages in scope because think about it, if you have, if two people are playing on the couch with each other and one person's in the left cage and the other person's in the right cage, we'll be zoomed out too far to, for that to be a fun match. You know what I mean? Now, it may work in a single-player game where you can zoom in on just the one player and he doesn't necessarily need to see what's in the other cage. So th- that's the kind of stuff we're playing with. But trust me, if we can do it and it's fun, we're going to put it in. So we have you know, um, uh, the elimination-type tag matches, uh, our retro rumble uh, is going to be in there. So that's your typical rumble style right. battle Royal. Um, and we're trying to work definitely six characters in the ring. At once we're going to try to do eight. Now our ring dimensions are, are more like wrestle fest. So it's a little smaller uh, ring in comparison to the character sprites. Cause we like the bigger style character sprites that wrestle fest had. So if we can get eight people in there and it's still fun, we'll do eight. If not, we'll limit it to six. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll tell you though, I want to do everything. So it may not be all at launch because we have to, we have to kind of cut the, you know, draw the line somewhere, but expect, you know, as long as we're successful, expect continued development of this game, uh, in, in, in not just uh paid DLC, but free DLC as well, depending that, on what it is. That was going to be my next question. We, we were going to slide into DLCs, um, are we looking at DLCs every quarter? I, I know it's down the line, but, I mean, what are your thoughts now? Right. DLCs every quarter I mean, or you know, whatever? It, I mean, it depends on what it is. So just from the development process, it's a little quicker to add a new stage, like a new ring, a new arena, uh, depending on what we're doing. Like, we can skin a new ring real easily. So that stuff we could add, you know, even weekly. We could add a new indie promotion if we get a deal with them and get their, their ring logos and all that in the game real quickly. Um, new characters take a little longer to develop. We have to do new animations for whatever their signature moves are. And then we got to recall our, our base character. So, you know, they take like an artist about a month to do. Um, but, you know, I, I want to do as much and as often as we can. So whatever's feasible, you know, if, if we have a, if we have a hit on our hands and, and we have the, the money coming in that I can reinvest back into the game and offer more content, I want to do it. So um, I, to put a time, I can't really say, but I, w- I would like to think we can get something out at least monthly, whether that's a full wrestler or just a ring, but something. New gameplay, um, whatever we can do to make the game more fun. In both free and paid, what would you look for uh, paid? Maybe maybe the wrestlers, maybe a specialty match. Yeah, I mean, that... Rings you're going to give away for free, correct? Well, no, I would say... Yeah, I would say gameplay would probably all be free. You know, that's what our goal is, unless there's something that just costs a ton of money to make. Um, my goal is to the core gameplay. If we want to tweak stuff and add new features to that, we're not going to 
we're not going to have people pay for that. Um, you know, now, and then even with the wrestlers, it depends how much really the license costs us. So some stuff we just might not be able to, unfortunately, you know, in an ideal world, everything would be free. Right. You know, if I could do it, I would. But unfortunately, there's costs associated with adding new wrestlers. And it, it's, you know, what kind of a deal is the wrestler going to give us, to, you know, from their license to get in? You know, I think from independent wrestlers, they're a little easier to work with, financially speaking, where we can make it worth their while to let us have their, their likeness for a smaller amount than somebody who's been in the WWE before, or been in a, a major promotion before, who, you know, they have a little more name recognition, so we have to pay a little more for that, you know? So it, it depends. I don't want, I don't want, I'm kind of not answering the question, but you know, I, I am very put it this way. I am, I am very aware of not liking people who DLC you to death with paid DLC. Okay. And whatever we can do to keep the cost down, we will, but we need to be able to have some revenue coming in so we can make more content. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, so, it makes sense. Unfortunately, unfortunately it is partially a business decision. Um, that we can bring in, but but first and foremost, we are fans of wrestling games, and we want to do as much as we can. So uh, we'll we'll figure it out, but you know, you know, the, we'll do the best we can as far as keeping the cost down for additional content. So this is a game, and there's so much more to talk about. But this is a game that is going to be a lifespan of years. It's not going to be next year, new one coming out. This is a year, decade game, possibly, right? I mean, it could be. I mean, it'll get to a point where we may want to make some changes to the core engine where we may want to do a new game, right? But of I would course. say we're definitely not going to do one every year. I mean, that I can definitely rule out. Uh, but, you know, with that said, you know, there may be a lot of new features we want to add, and a, and, a, and a sequel may work better than trying to shoehorn something in programmatically uh, into the original code. There may be, you know, just something we want to rewrite and then we maybe do Retromania too, you know. That, that's good. But I, w- I would definitely say we're definitely not going to have one every year. Mm-hmm. I will say that. Okay. Uh, local or just on or online? I mean, are we going to have both plays? You, you know, I, that this forty-two-year-old so, guy can just it, sit at home and play by himself, and don't worry about kids kicking my ass over and over. <laughs> so we're we're definitely going to have um, it's going to be couch co-op at launch. But we've already started working on online play. It's just it's very buggy right now, and I think it's going to take a little bit longer. We're going to have to probably get a few more dedicated resources in to really clean up the online code to make sure it's not buggy when we launch it. So I doubt that will be ready for launch. But And I've read so many horror stories and case studies of games launching with buggy online play that really kills the experience for the end users. So I'd rather not have it if it's going to be buggy. Um, but we're definitely working on it. So at some point, a little after launch, we will definitely introduce online play, uh, but it won't be at launch. Okay. All right, let's talk about the roster. And there's one big one right off the bat. We have the Road Warriors. We have Tommy Dreamer. We have the whole BWO. We have all this. We have, which we'll break and talk about that in a minute, uh, Indie Mania. But there, there's so many people that have been announced so far. Plus, there's some hidden, with my air quotes, that uh, you guys haven't released yet. My big question is, how, yep. do you, how do you get Road Warrior Hawk? Like, how does that, like, everybody else is alive. Uh, that's my big question. Right. Like, how do you get him? Well, Animal owns the rights to both of them. Okay. So I, I guess he had already worked that out um, way before, you know, I guess Hawk's been, you know, past, well, probably 10 years ago now. At this About, point. yeah. It's not a little more. Um, so... Um, you know, I guess Animal had worked that out a long time ago. Um, so he owned the rights to both both uh, both him and Hawk's likeness. Okay, which I'm, I'm excited for. That was, that Thank, God. Thank God! Thank yeah. God! So yeah, um, yeah, but they were a must-have. You know, they were the boss of the original game, and I definitely those were the first guys we signed. Okay, and then you you brought along Tommy Dreamer, which brings on House of Hardcore yep. as well. Uh, are you yep. are you going to get anybody else that's hardcore without spilling beans that kind of goes hand in hand <laughs> with Tommy Dreamer? Yeah, I think there's a lot of guys outside of the BWO who are all in ECW together with Tommy. 
you know, there's a lot of other guys that uh, we either want to talk to or have talked to about future DLC. Unfortunately, we have to limit our roster just due to budget constraints. And there's only so many guys we can sign, not just because of the licensing cost, but like I said before, each character, all the artwork has to be done, the animations. You know, each each wrestler in our game is going to have all their signature moves in there. So, you know, we have to animate all those moves. Um, so, you know, our roster is going to be 12 to 16 to start, um, probably closer to 16 than to 12, I'll say that. And um, so we definitely want to add more of the, you know, I guess the, the hardcore originals uh, from, from that Tommy Dreamer group at some point. Absolutely. Nice. But I'll just say Tommy's been awesome. You know, I've, I've met him a couple of times now. I uh, talked to him and he's been very helpful in our whole process. Um, putting us in touch with a couple of the guys that we ended up signing. Uh, so it, it's just been great. Revert back to Nick Aldis and the NWA since they're taking a complete liking to this game. Uh, yep. Very NWA heavy. First of all, my favorite set, and I don't know if I'm going to play it, uh, the Melee in Miami or whatever we called it a little bit ago. Um, <laughs> right. The NWA is unbelievable. It looks spot on from everything that I have seen. Are we going to... Without, I know you can't say yes, Mark. Exactly. Da, da, da. Right. Could could we see some transition down the line of more NWA as well? Because there's a huge get the pun question mark that needs to be on this game. <laughs> yeah. So I would I would say I can guarantee you're going to see some more NWA um, very soon. And um, but yeah, I mean I think just. Like I said before, what they're doing and what we're doing, what they're doing in wrestling, we're doing with wrestling video games. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of the same approach we have. They're a good fit with us, and we absolutely want to add more NWA content to the game. You know, I don't necessarily want to be an NWA-only game just because I think one of the things is wrestling fans, you know, what did, you, what did we grow up wanting to see, right? Right. Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan. You know what I mean? And I think it happened too late when it eventually did happen. It didn't necessarily happen the right way. I don't, I don't remember the feud being that great. I think it was around 94 or 93 when they finally did got it. in the ring together. And, and, you know, but it just could have been. Imagine if that match would have happened in, like, 1988, 89. You yeah. know what I mean? It's and, Starcade So that's why we're yeah. not just going to – Yeah. So we don't want to – we don't want to just do NWA, but NWA is very important to us. And – you know, I just personally, I'm a fan of it. So you can you can bet as long as uh, we keep uh, working well with uh, the NWA, we're going to keep adding more content to the game from that. So, yeah, I mean, they, they've been great to deal with. You know, I, uh, again, I love the commercial Nick did and uh, with with Dave, and you know, they I just love their product. So I can I can definitely say we're going to be doing more stuff with them. Now, let me stir the pot a little bit. And why don't we have any women to start right off the bat? No, that's a good question. It's a fair question. So it really comes down to, unfortunately, we can only do so much in so much time with so much budget, right? So in order to do women, we need more, we need women model um, animations, right? So the way we, we make our animations is we have four basically body types for men. So if we were, you know, our biggest cost in doing this game is the artwork. So we would basically have to double the artwork cost to put women in the game. And I, I, for, I'm self-funding this. I just don't have enough money. I'm not a millionaire. Um, you know, I, I have a budget for this game that we're sticking to uh, that I think gives us a great roster, a great gameplay, and a great, great game uh, within the budget that, that I want to make the game in. You know, not, and I'm not saying we're cutting corners. You know, it's a, it's a very decent decent financial uh um investment but in order to do women properly you know i need to almost double that and i right. just can't do that right now so we're, the, the 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 process hopefully goes as we're successful we make a fun video game that people like to play uh we get a little bit of revenue coming back in and we reinvest that revenue to do the women the right way so that's not to say that you know we're not already talking to somewhere so it's definitely on our minds we're definitely already planning for it. Um, it's just a matter of timing is really what it comes down to. Right, and that makes perfect sense because, you know, one spec is, 
I'm not knowing numbers at all. Hundred thousand dollars, and you have to double the spec for a woman, so you got two hundred thousand dollars wrapped up, and you don't have right. a cent back yet. So I, I completely understand, right. but right, makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, and 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 we want to do it right. You know what I mean? I don't want to use a male character and kind of shoehorn it in for a female wrestler. So, you know, we want our women in the game to be women. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get, there. hopefully we get there. You know, if we're doing our job right and making the game fun, we, we will definitely get there. Right. You don't want anybody like Captain Lou Albano coming out being the women uh, body type. That just wouldn't work for, you know, somebody like Ray Lynn right. or somebody. Yeah, I, I completely understand. <laughs> right. Uh, ring entrances. Yeah, but we, we but, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go first. No, that's all I was going to I was just going to piggyback on what you just said, but we're good with that. We can go, we can move to ring entrances. All right, let's, yeah, let's talk about ring entrances. Um, is there going to be something different with each person coming down? I mean, I know we're all about WrestleFest where they just walk out, you know, cool stuff right. like that. Different music or the 80s, ding, 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 ding music. No, so we have, we have entrance, we have like kind of 16-bit era ring entrance music for each of the wrestlers, their own. So I believe in WrestleFest, it was just really the the Road Warriors had their own music, right? And that was it. I think everybody else came after the same thing. But we have we have individual ring entrance music for each wrestler uh, that we did custom. We looked into licensing, but it just didn't work for us. Um, so we have individual ring entrance music that we think fits each wrestler. Um, so and and the entrances for the most part they're going to be. You know, the standard WrestleFest walk down that, that center aisle, but we, we do have a few surprises in there as well. I, I, I love these surprises. I'll leave it at that. I'll the leave surprises it at that. and surprises. I'll leave it at that. And there, there's not any time that I want to fast forward to April, or, you know, I'm going to say April this year, <laughs> uh, to get this game. And how is it going to be available, by the way, before I jump into what's going on right now? Is it just going to be uh, a downloadable game on PlayStation, Switch, Xbox One, or can I get a disc? So, digital, as of right now, like if I had to say it's digital only right now, we are talking to a couple physical um, disc cartridge manufacturers now uh, and discussing the possibility of doing a uh, physical release as well. Um, and then I'll also add we're we're discussing with an arcade manufacturer as well. Just, what? And that, that's an exclusive that you get. So. What? That just, uh, I'm in the process of trying to talk to my wife to get an arcade game in my house that, you know, plays 13,000 games, da -da 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 -da, and WrestleFest is, right. of course, one of them. And she's given me the, not the okay yet, but, well, let me think about it. And I'm throwing games at her now that she would love to play just so I can pay this set amount of money to get WrestleFest. You know, that's what I want. Right. <laughs> right. And now you announced that this could possibly be an arcade game. You don't know how I'm excited right now. But I also want the graphics. That's why I asked if there's going to be a hard copy because I've seen right. the artwork. You know, I, I'm in the process yeah. of ordering shirts and getting this and that, and it's I love it. Right. I'm, I'm a very caricature guy, so I would want yeah. the hard copy. Yeah, no, we have some ta our, our artists out of Spain did the. Blue Essence Studio did the caricature artwork, and they've just done a phenomenal job. Really captures the spirit of the game, um, and they just the detail on the on the caricatures has just been amazing. All, all everybody's we've had one done and given to them; they all love them. So nice, that's, that's excellent. And are you going to do that for so, yeah, so, Indie Mania? So the winner definitely, um, but you know, like, like I. Um, so the Indie Mania, we have whoever wins the tournament is going to be treated as a full roster member on the game, just like all the other ones. So they'll get their page, their image on the website, a bio on the website. And we're putting some stuff. We have a whole Indie Mania page right now. And we're really promoting indie, independent wrestling. You know, I just got into it, really, um, when we had this idea. I mean, I followed it in the last couple of months. Um, and I've gotten to know some of the independent wrestlers just from meeting them at the shows that I've gone to. And just the stuff they do there with, for really, you know, smaller crowds, not a ton of money that they're making, but they, they, they 
put on some great performances. They really do. So, you know, only we're only going to have one winner right now. You know, I could definitely see a Indie Mania DLC pack, full pack being released at some point with additional guys that may not win the tournament but are in it. Some of your higher um, vote getters. So, yeah, yeah, but even like, you know, in an ideal world, I'd get all 32 of them in the game. I, I, you know, if I had the budget to do that, I would do it. You know, I want to get, I want to grow this roster is one of the big goals I have. But like I said, I keep saying gameplay is going to trump everything initially. So that's where we're, you know, we're focused, we're hyper focused on making sure the game's fun. And I think if the game, if we do our job right and the game is fun and people play it, everyone will be hungry for more content. So we'll be able to keep producing that content. And now, and now the question that everybody's asked you probably on every interview or anything, what do we look in price point? I mean, I, we can't, you can't hold you to it, but, I mean, round about, right. what, what are we going to look at roughly? I would say under $30 is the, is, my, is the company tagline. So we haven't set it yet, but it'll be under 30 29 Now we're at 29 no, <laughs> you know, or twenty four ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine. Um you know, it'll be it'll be under thirty dollars though. That's unbelievable with what you have on this game. And we didn't talk about there is a story mode. Now use this story mode with air quotes as you can't see me, I'm still right. doing it. Because you can um go after Nick Aldis' title, right? Yeah, so well there's a couple different modes. So the ten pounds of gold mode is basically um, your your standard fight through the roster, win the championship, right? So that's your 10 pounds of gold mode, excuse me. So, but then in addition to that, we actually have a full-blown story that a writer wrote um, that you will go through. You'll play as Johnny Retro, uh, a.k.a. John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Nitro, a.k.a. Johnny Impact. Um, Johnny, Johnny Impact. Johnny AEW. Johnny, Johnny Mundo. Yeah, all that, yeah. <laughs> Johnny gimmick name, right? So right. we thought he just, changing his name to Retro, we just had a good idea for a story around him, just him being Johnny Retro. Uh, we thought it really fit well. I've talked to John on the phone several times. Really cool guy. Uh, real nice person. Down to earth. Um, you know, again, another. And I've been lucky because all these guys have been really great to deal with. Um, and you know, and he, he just announced recently, he's going back to WWE, which actually works out really well for us because he'll have even more eyes on him than he already did when he, when he starts being back on TV. So, you know, and our contract was signed well before his, um, so there's no issues there, but we have a full blown story where you'll go through, uh, you'll be Johnny retro coming off an injury, um, coming back into wrestling, kind of similar to what he's doing now going back to the WWE, although he'd been wrestling for a while. Um, but in, in the first place you go is Stevie Richards Fitness to get back in shape. Where else would you go? Right. Right. He's got to do some resistance bands training, and and Stevie's got to get him back into shape. So it, it, uh, it starts there, and it kind of takes you through different parts of the world. It's more of like a choose-your-own-adventure, but there are a couple different story uh, branches in there. It's nothing too... Um, you know, too involved, but it's definitely a fun story to go through where you'll play the different type of matches that we offer during the game, and you'll have to make choices, and the outcome of the story will change depending on what choices that you make. So it's not like hyper, we're not talking Final Fantasy, you know, or anything like that, but it's a fun, if you're a wrestling fan, you know, there's going to be some special appearances from like kind of auxiliary on the side wrestling personalities. Um, that may not be wrestlers, but may be involved in wrestling that you're going to see in the story mode. Um, maybe some special appearances by some other people involved. So we have some cameos in that story mode that we think people are going to enjoy. Um, you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but I think it'll be fun. It'll be fun for people to play. Any other titles involved? Can we go through a gauntlet for tag team titles? Yeah, so we have access to all the NWA championships. We have the Hardcore uh, House of Hardcore championships available to us. Um, so we have those, and they will be featured. One of the things we really want to do, which we already started working on, is is for the game to remember who's champion. And so let's say 10 pounds of gold, you go through the first time and you win it with Road Warrior Animal, let's say. 
and you beat Nick Aldis. Well, the next time you go through 10 pounds of gold mode, you now you got to beat Road Warrior Animal. Oh, right? It's nice. the last match. Nice. I love you that. Know, it's things like that. So your local, your local game save or whatever, that's going to keep track of who's champion. So if you go through like what used to be Saturday night's main event mode, but a tag team, uh, kind of gauntlet thing. It'll remember who the current champion is, and they'll be the last people you face. Um, then you'll have versus mode where you can do anything. So you can always just challenge or fight as the champion or challenge the champion through a versus mode. Um, so, and you'll have full control over that as well. So you, you said every NWA championship. Are we talking my all-time favorite championship too, the TV title? Hey, they just brought it back. Yeah, that's a right? good, that's so a good enough answer for me. It. That's I guess good we got to have it. It's a good enough answer for me. Uh, you know? So, like I said, like all the – we're like at the – you know, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm, you know, I'm a video game fan. Those are all the kind of things that I want to see in there. Um, and they've, you know, they didn't have them when I was a kid. I think a lot of the other games now have done this kind of stuff. But I think it's still not necessarily standard in all wrestling games. So, um, we definitely want to – you know, you want to see your champion walk down the aisle wearing that belt. You know what I mean? You yes. want to see that. So I want to see, like, if I'm in in, in any part of my um, 10 pounds of gold mode, I want whoever is currently champion on my system, I want it to know who's champion on my system. So when my friends come over, you know, I can play as a champion, or maybe they're the champion and they play as them, you know, whatever it is. So Nice. So Anything fun. And it, it, it sounds amazing. I really, I really cannot wait. I was excited from the first commercial. And now I'm just pumped even more. Uh, finally, before we get in some some closing stuff, create a player. Uh, I know right now it's not a possibility, but is it something that we're going to look at down the line? Yeah, absolutely. So we're definitely going to look at doing it. And again, the reason we're um, we're not doing it initially. It's similar to my answer that I gave on the women's wrestlers, right? right? So if we have a creator wrestler, and let's say you want to create Stone Cold, well, we better have the double bird salute and a, a kick to the stomach and the stunner the way he does it, right? Right. So we have to draw that animation. And if we want the rock in there, you know, if people to be able to create the rock in the game – we got to have the rock bottom in there. We got to have the people's elbow in there, right? And then you go through. You have Hulk Hogan. You better have the leg drop in there. You better put the taunt with your hand to your ear, you know, so on and so forth. So we have to do all those animations, or our create a wrestler mode is not going to be worth anything. So if you can't create the wrestlers, you may be able to get the look down, but if you can't do their moves, what's the point? Right. I don't want Hulk Hogan right, so, doing a, a splash like the Blue Meanie's gonna. It's not going to happen. Right. Right, you know what I mean? So we have to do all, a lot more animations to be able to do a creator wrestler mode. So it's just, unfortunately, I may sound like a bro, we are a small indie studio. I do have a lot of great people working on this, but at the end of the day, we're not a big company. So we can't, we want to do all that. We just can't do it all at once. And that's not saying it's never going to be done. We just need a little bit more time. We can't do a big bang approach and do everything at once on our first go around. You know what I mean? Hey, Rome. We, we may have to save some stuff. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? Right, exactly. So, yeah, it would be great to do. And some people say, oh, you have to have create a wrestler, you know, in any wrestling game. But what? name any other independent wrestling game that's come out. Right. You know? I didn't need now, create a wrestler in pro wrestling. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, we're, we're really focused on gameplay. We'll get to the creator wrestler. We want to make sure our gameplay is solid. And we do, you know, the other thing is we like the licensed wrestler approach. You know, one, we want to support those wrestlers that have given us all this entertainment now and in the past. And, you know, they're, they get, they get a paycheck out of this, you know, so they're getting something for us using their license. Whereas the creator wrestler, you know, those guys aren't getting paid. Now for the rock, maybe he doesn't need. You know, you know what I mean? Right. They're doing okay. But for, for a lot of the guys, we're, we're, you know, the Indie Mania tournament, we want to get these guys some exposure so so they can do something else. So, you know, and I, I don't want to say, you know, we want to make money too. So I don't want to sound like completely, you know, I'm just for them and everything. So I, we are running a business and everything. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, this is more of a passion project. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to make money and I wanted to do well so we can keep making more games. But that's not really the reason I got into it. Right, right. Uh, let's talk about, on your website as well, um, 
you got some clothing on there. You have some cool merch that's available that maybe some people have not gone to. Shoot out your website and what else is on there. Yeah, so we're at www.retromaniawrestling.com. So we have a bunch of different sections. We got a little right up on like NWA and House of Hardcore as being the promotions in the game. Hopefully that list grows as we go. Uh, we and we like you said we have a merchandise page where we have a we are on Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, Ryan Barkin over there um, set us up with the store, and we have a cut. Pretty soon, all the wrestlers will have shirts with their caricatures on our store. Right now, I think we have four or five of them out there now that you can purchase. Um, and the we're not, you know, RetroSoft Studios isn't getting any of the the proceeds from that. The wrestlers are getting a piece, and then a portion of that, the wrestlers agreed that we would give to a, a charity of their choosing. Uh, so one of the ones where we've given some money to, not very little bit so far. We haven't sold too many, but uh, is the Valerie Fund, which is our um, our referee Ryan from House of Hardcore, um, uh, is a big supporter of the Valerie Fund. He they supported him. He's a cancer survivor, um, and he's really doing everything. He's selling some of the artwork we did and donating all the proceeds uh, to charity uh, to his fund. So we're we're trying to do a, a little bit. Uh, that we can to help the wrestlers um, make a little extra and also to do a little bit of charity if we can. Nice. That's, that sounds great. It's always good to give back as well. And uh, a huge family supporter uh, of cancer, you know, organizations as we right. have that in our family so much so uh uh the can crushers will also look into the valerie fund as well guys uh let's give back as well if it's anything you know we can yep. we can help this out hey, every little bit helps you know even if we've only sold a couple of shirts but you know every little bit helps um and you know like i said you know we're not, you know we're not you know we're not raising a ton of money but i just feel like if one you know if everybody just does a little bit to, to help out, you know, it makes a big difference. So, yeah, many. Uh, the, what's that saying? Oh, uh, sayings are just popping in my head tonight. Many man, many hands uh, equal less work, or something like that. I, you know where I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So then, uh, the else we have on our web page, we have Indie Mania. All the details on that. So I'm not sure when this is going to be airing online, but throughout January, we're running uh, our Indie Mania tournament. And all the details are online, but each night, uh, as we're recording this, uh, Shane Mercer's going up against RJ City for our first round match of the Meanie division. Um, so we're basically, how that works is fans, they're not actually wrestling each other, but um, they are, fans are voting um, for the winner who their most popular wrestler is between those two. Um, and then the fans get a vote. Um, Retrosoft Studios is voting. All the people that work for us were voting and coming to a consensus of who we want. And Dave LaGreca from Busted Open Radio it gets a vote as well. So um, between that, the best two out of three votes moves on to the next round. And, Mike, let's talk about you just announced your announced team as well. Pretty excited for that is ROH is now into this picture. Yes, so... We have Ian Riccoboni and Cole Cabana are going to be doing kind of like an NBA Jam type uh, audio commentary, similar to the original WrestleFest, maybe a little bit more than just Hulk, Body Slam. You know, we're doing a little bit more than that, uh, but it's not going to be, you know, pl traditional play-by-play -by, -play by any means, but just something fun to add to the atmosphere of the match that's going on. They've already done some recordings for us. Um, and, you know, the artwork of Ian and Colt looks fantastic. I, I think we got to get Colt done in his uh, announcement gear as well. And we also will be having another uh, a ring announcer as well that we're going to announce shortly. I was going to say uh, because so we're finishing up the artwork there. Colt's actually a playable character. How is he going to announce his own matches? Yeah, we're, we're, we got a couple ideas of how we're going to handle that. So uh, we haven't decided quite, but that was one of the first things people were saying. They're like, they think, I think Taz – was a playable character in one of the SmackDown games, and he was on the announce team. So uh, it was a little bit weird. So we'll, we'll figure out – we'll get something fun and create, creative of how to handle that properly. Well, if you ever need help, the Can Crushers are here to help you out, without a doubt. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, Mike, I know you're a busy guy. I know you're going to, you know, hang up right now and get back to work on Retromania. At least I'm hoping you are. <laughs> 
tell everybody else where they can vote for Indie Mania and more of your social media. Yeah, so uh, Indie Mania, all the voting's done on social media, so it's real easy. Basically, either like or retweet on Twitter, uh, follow or like on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so you, if you just follow us at Retrosoft Studio on Twitter and at Retrosoft Studios on Instagram and Facebook, it, whatever your chosen um, social media, all the votes count. Uh, all three would count for your favorite wrestlers. So you can go there and follow us there. All of our announcements are done through social media. We also have a newsletter that you can sign up on our website if you go to www.retromaniawrestling.com. Scroll to the bottom, enter your email address, and click subscribe. We send out a newsletter uh, maybe every uh, four to six weeks, just uh, some specific information that only the newsletter followers get. Um, and, and then that's pretty much it. Stay tuned, and then uh, hopefully early 2020, it'll be in your hands. Yeah, we can't wait. Mike, thank you for coming on Crank Can Crushers tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure, and I can't wait to be uh, kicking some ass with Nick Aldis. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. So where to start? Where to start? First and foremost, we have to say thank you again, uh, Mr. Michael Herman, for coming on Can Crushers and spending some time and telling us the complete lowdown of what's going on with Retromania Wrestling. Two, guys, make sure you're out there daily voting. I know you've missed a couple if you're just hearing this for the first time, but we're still in the first round. Make sure you just get to rest, uh, Retromania Wrestling. Facebook, Instagram, however you need to, and vote. There's some great stars that really need votes to get on this game. And I'm with Mike on this. If we could slowly, we, as I'm all of a sudden into uh, Retrostroph, if we could get everybody from this tournament in the game in the near future, that's unbelievable. I would love to play with RJ City or... Yellow Dog, or oh, I can't crush your alum himself, Jay freaking Bradley, is in the tournament. How much would you love to play with Jay Bradley, the biggest heavyweight, uh, you know, part of OVW's Legion of Brutality? It's unbelievable. And how cool would it be if we could work something out, you know, if I could call Al Snow and... OVW could slow, slowly get into this game as well. All things that, you know, could possibly happen, and hopefully something like that does, because this game is, is built, as I said, talking to Mike, for years, you know? This is the DLCs that can happen, and it's just completely building, and it's all about money. I, I completely agree with Mike, you know, he's not, you know, Tony Khan, all of a sudden, he's not Vince McMahon, but uh, he's doing this for passion, the love of the game, and, and it's unbelievable. And who wouldn't want to play a freaking scaffold match? Of course, you have to have the Road Warriors up there against, I don't know, maybe Tommy Dream, or maybe the Blue World Order would be great. The Road Warriors throw in uh, the Blue Meanie off and Stevie Richards. That would be awesome. Uh, something I didn't get to talk about was managers. Um, slipped my mind in the midst of the whole thing. Is it possible in the near future we see a manager kind of DLC? That probably goes hand in hand with the women as well and the creative player. There's always that extra step that has to happen. But unbelievable. I, I cannot wait till this game is out i really can't and him dropping a bombshell saying that this could possibly be an arcade game oh my god kelly is gonna kill me because that would probably be the arcade game that would be in the studio here in the near future ah <sighs> We went retro. We went retro mania here on Can Crushers, and I loved every second of it. Again, give Retrosoft Studios and Retro Mania Wrestling a follow on everything. Great interview once again. Thank you, Mr. Michael Harmon, for coming on the show. And remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called the garbage can, not a garbage cannot. So you guys smile with our weekly show, and uh, keep it real. Get ready to go retro. Yeah.